Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a still life of pomegranate and grapes. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll show you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man and chat during our live show. So if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alright, welcome if you're new to my channel. We do these live streams and I show you step-by-step -step painting live and however long it takes me to paint it is however long we do it. I haven't painted this ahead of time so I just kind of figure it out as I go along and Mark and I chat about odd whatever. <laughs> just as if you're in here in a, uh, if I was teaching a painting class in real person. So uh, we try to keep it informal and fun. So I hope you enjoy it and subscribe if you liked it all right i've got a 9 by 12 inch canvas today we're going to be using a mixed media canvas board from fredericks and i painted it black and then sketched on my design on here with a charcoal pencil so just a really soft pencil or chalk or something like that pastel pencil something that will erase easily and not scratch up your paint um, our brushes we're going to be using princeton brushes and i've got a variety of rounds and a few filberts and filberts are the rounded tip ones here and these ones are stiff bristled so that'll make it a little bit easier to blend this is a four short filbert in the aspen series with the black and then the red handles are the velvet touch line from um uh, from princeton sorry lost my <laughs> lost my words <laughs> and then around one and two from their uh, 6100 series in the long handled green um so again just a few random brushes filberts rounds in different various sizes and then um, a couple angle brushes will help us get into some of these nooks and crannies as we get going we'll probably show some glazing tonight some dry brushing um, techniques so if you've ever wondered what glazing is we'll be going over that tonight in our show let's go over colors I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, yellow oxide, Indian yellow hue. Uh, this is cadmium red light, quinacridone red, quinacridone magenta, uh, doxazine purple, ultramarine blue, and thalo turquoise, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and zinc white, and then this is gloss glazing liquid. Um, if you don't have all these same exact colors, just use kind of ones that are similar in um, value and tone so you know if you don't have the um, Indian yellow hue it's just kind of an orangey golden yellow so you could add a little bit of red or or orange to your whatever yellow that you have to make it closer to that color that kind of thing all right let's get going here I'm going to start out with my three eighths inch blender I think and just kind of block in some of my pomegranate I usually work from back to front and that way we can kind of layer over the top and don't have to worry about overlapping of things. So I'm going to get a little bit of water on this brush. Um, this is the 3 8 inch blender. I don't know if I said that already. I probably did. Um, yellow oxide. We've had our grandbaby here for all weekend. Three, three four days. Three, four days. It's yeah. been super fun. So it's We kicked them out. <laughs> Sent him back home. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> you and your hand little head south. I just re realized that that is it, it's it's a lot different uh, taking care of a two year old when you're in your fifties than it is when you're in your thirties. So I'm sure logically I knew that, but <laughs> you know physically now. Physically, yes, exactly. I know physically now. All right, adding a little bit of white into this uh, with the Indian yellow hue over here. So I've got some yellow oxide here, just plain, and then I added a little tiny bit of the cadmium red light here, and then I added some yellow, Indian yellow hue, and some white over here. So I've got kind of three different tones to work with here. Just to start out, I'm going to kind of come up here. I'm going to get a little bit of the darker and just going to map in our shape and basically you're talking you know a round shape with a little um, blunt end on it here for the pomegranate not too difficult if you're going to be drawing it yourself I will have the traceable available for this um, on my patreon page so if you do not like to draw you can still paint 
just trace this on your canvas and go just kind of like a paint by number almost. And some people, you know, are purist and are like, you know, that's not real art. But um, I think anytime you're painting and enjoying yourself, it's real art. So, <laughs> you know, you do you. Don't worry about what other people say. If you enjoy it and, uh, and find it therapeutic, then, you know, you don't have to impress anybody. All right. And uh, most of those kind of people that would say that were, are more impressed with themselves than anybody else anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, getting burnt, uh, burnt orange here and just adding a little bit of it over here on this dark side. While this is wet, just kind of blending it in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this along the outside edge. So I've got this orangey golden color. And our pomegranate um, is the stripes and striations in it are kind of coming straight down here and then kind of going around and curving. So follow the curve on these outer areas. And then when you get to the middle, kind of go straight and then start following the curves here and again, end up like that. So then you'll get kind of this rounded shape to it. We passed out, um, <laughs> We have, we have a neighborhood that has, you know, good traffic on Halloween. And so we always just sit outside and um, pass out candy for like three hours <laughs> until we run out or until we run out. <laughs> and this year uh, was no exception. And we had, that's why our grandbaby came down from, and my parents came down, which was really fun to get to yeah. see them. And they got to see the fun, you know, Liam getting to trick or treat. He's not quite three yet. And, um, but I had a bunch of stickers left over from, um, we, we did a race promotion, local race, um, and I made stickers for that and to give out to the racers. And we had, since it was an, a virtual race this year, uh, we had a lot of stickers left over. <laughs> a lot of people didn't show up to buy, pick up their bags. <laughs> so... I had like, I'm not, I'm not kidding when I say like 300 stickers. <laughs> so, and we are down to about that many. <laughs> like we gave away. And, and what were those stickers of? Of little Fitz Pickle and holding a brush. So you can show them. Actually, I don't know. No, I probably don't have one here. Yeah, maybe up there. But yeah, so, and the funny thing was the kids, I was like, well, you know, I just put them on the table and I was like, if you want a sticker, you know, grab it. And um, the kids were more excited about the stickers than the candy. They were like, Mom, I got a sticker. <laughs> so we're definitely going to do that next year. <laughs> it's like, hey, free advertisement. And the kids love it. So win-win. Mm -hmm. I did. Um, the so box is out. Exactly like yeah, this is him. Like this. And it had like our, it was on a white square and had our logo on it and stuff. YouTube channel. So if you're watching and you trick-or-treating in my house <laughs> thanks for showing up at our live show <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm sure that maybe there'll be one or two who knows <laughs> at the very least we made some kids happy <laughs> get some got rid of some stickers and yeah i mean we did have some some uh trick-or-treaters that were kind of borderline you know i figure if you have a beard <laughs> we did you, have some you might be a little beard. old, but yeah. yeah, we did have them. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't. No beard shame them. No. We didn't. No. Every, everybody gets a, gets a candy. My beard was better than his, so I didn't <laughs> mind. <laughs> All right, I'm just putting a little bit of the darker reds down here, and then getting those golden yellows up in here. Yeah, just again, just kind of going along here. I'm just kind of going slow and just. I mean, it, it uh, going over this black is going to take a couple coats, so we're not really trying to cover it completely right now. Just kind of trying to lay in the general shape and the direction of the um, fruit uh, stripes and things that I'm seeing here. But yeah, so it was a good weekend. We had a really fun time. Mm -hmm. This one has got a little bit of the quinacridone red. If you don't have quinacridone red, you could use like cadmium red light or, or cadmium red medium or um, a um, naphthol red or something. And even just add a little bit of magenta to it. Speaking of, I'm going to get burnt umber magenta here and use that in my darkest part of the 
pomegranate that's going to go down here and it's going to pretty much turn to black so we just want it just a hint of color down there but we want to keep the value and by value i mean dark and light really close to the black so it should just disappear into that black you shouldn't see a hard line there where the end of the pomegranate is joining the rest of it or just touching the black whatever there we go okay so and then at this point um this this is going to start to dry and so if i was to continue and say okay i want a second layer on here now and try to lay down more paint what would happen is i would start scratching off the paint that i've already put on um, because it's starting to dry it's trying to grab onto the canvas but it's going to grab onto your brush if you try to paint over it so you just have to let it dry completely you can blow dry it if you're um, impatient but we've got plenty of other things that we can paint so we'll wait for that to dry and we'll work on another area while it's doing that all right let me see here um i don't know where i got that i always end up with weird bruises when i, <laughs> <laughs> I swear okay at least you weren't being hit by a sword no no <laughs> yeah that was funny yeah <laughs> My son Jordan, daddy, daddy to Liam, he came home with some swords that some light up, sword, foam yeah. swords that light up from one of their things like, okay. <laughs> and the funny thing was Liam was posing with it, you know, yeah. he like knew all the poses and he, grant, he knew he's a very good swordsman <laughs> for a two-year-old. Okay. I'm going to get some purple. We're going to work on the grapes. So I'm going to lay in the darkest colors um, that I'm seeing here in some of the areas. And then I'm also going to lay in some of the lighter oranges. Okay, so I've got the purple, quinacridone magenta, doxazine purple, and the quinacridone burnt orange. It's going to make this really pretty um, reddish purple here. And this will be just the perfect color for our grapes. So I'm going to kind of lay them in a little bit here. And then I'm going to get some white. I'm going to spray this really good. Some of these grapes are going to have like a yellow undertone underneath. Some of them not so much, but some of them have a lot of yellow. And... So I've sprayed this, it's gonna keep it wet and I'm gonna go ahead and work on that yellow because I think that that will be good to put it in on the ones that I'm seeing it on first. So adding a little bit of white to the Indian yellow hue just makes it more opaque. It's a transparent color, so it's not gonna go on even with a little bit of white, it's still kind of transparent there. So I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of the quinacridone burnt orange to it to kind of make it a look a little bit even more orangey there we go so kind of something like that there we go and I'm just gonna kind of lay that in in just a few places along here whether it's getting a little bit more light and this one had some of it so all right I'm on a timer tonight because Mark's <laughs> wanting to watch Oak Island so I've got to get this ready yeah if you're it. in the uh, Facebook group you you see what's on the docket for tonight <laughs> so I've already finished off the peppermint shake <laughs> and now we're in the pomegranate painting stage we're in a we're, yeah and then stage three is the grand finale season premiere Oak Island nice yeah you're telling me <laughs> grabbing some of this red that we were using our pomegranate that had i think these two reds here the cadmium red light one thing you will notice if you're new to my channel <laughs> if you're new to my painting um it will be helpful if you're going to be painting along to actually uh, write down the colors that i'm mixing because i go pretty quickly and i mix several colors and then um, i will go back to that color that i've mixed that's still on my palette if it's wet and use it in other places and sometimes I forget what it was that I actually mixed so not uncommon to, to, for me to do that 
to switch around. So if you're painting along, you might just uh, take a screenshot every now and then if I mix up a new color so that you kind of know what I'm doing, what I'm using. Or you can just mix up your paints in the same place and use the same, you know, paints that I'm using. We have a question. Okay. Uh, they would like to know, could you uh, speak a little bit to the palette that you're using and what you like about it? Because they currently use a Stay Wet palette, but they're looking for other options. Um, well, the one thing about the Stay Wet palette is that it can make your paint kind of loose. Like it, it really does, like it pushes moisture into your paint. And so I don't find it helpful for actually working while you're painting. Um, but you can store your paints with it, you know, um, for a few days afterwards, as long as you make sure that you're, um, you don't have it too wet because it will like turn them to soup and mold too. If you don't, uh, too much time. yeah, if you leave it for too, too long. So, um, the glass palette, it does, it, I, I do like it. It does dry out my paints a little bit faster than the palette paper that I was using, before I find, but um, it's super convenient because you can just blow blow the you know or scrape it, not blow it, um, scrape the <laughs> scrape the paint off. Um, and it, yeah, if I remember correctly, you struggled a little bit at first using it because it dried the paints a little faster than you were used to. That's what I t just said. Yeah. Okay, I was reading. I was listening. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, okay. So I'm just restating everything that you're saying from okay. now on. Okay. No, I just said that I didn't say that I struggled. I just said that it does dry faster. Oh, so okay, well, yes. struggle might be a strong word. Mm -hmm. You were surprised by it, I think. Yeah, I was surprised being that it's <clears throat> non-porous. I thought that it would, but I think that maybe it's just you know I don't know. I really don't know honestly what the physical phenomenon is, the why I would do that, but adding a little bit of dark there. So I'm just kind of going through here, and you can see these grapes are anywhere from like orangey red to purple you know purplish and each one of these grapes kind of really has its own like coloration um in that same kind of family so you don't have to go through and do them all the same in fact it'll look better if you kind of have a little variation with each individual grape here and if you're drawing these out just kind of remember you know to <clears throat> think about which ones are farther back and then which ones are in front the ones in front are obviously going to overlap on top of the ones in back, and then um, you'll have a little bit of darkness where they touch right here. Can you see that little bit of black right here, right there? That's because that yellow was trying to dry and I touched that area before it was dry. So that's what happens. It just wasn't quite dry enough, so I just need to leave that guy alone. Come back to him when he's <clears throat> ready for more paint and dry. Okay, getting some red orange color here, and kind of gonna try to do a little bit of red along this edge, but again, it's kind of acting like it's trying to dry still. So, wait. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice all of a sudden. Um, all right, let's get some more of this magenta, burnt orange mixture and using that dark purple in the crevices. I might even add a little bit of turquoise. Turquoise is gonna make it more blue and darker. Just, just a nice dark color right in here. And I'm just going to put this color kind of in my dark areas between some of these grapes here. And some of them, like down in here, this there's one that's in the dark area below all these that you're just barely seeing, like a tiny bit of it. So I'm just going to put it down there with this dark color. Same here. It's kind of really nice and dark. We've already got the dark that we're, you know, in our background, but we're just kind of playing with the 
color, just shifting it slightly, maybe a half tone lighter than that black. And then the ones, the fruit that are kind of in front on top are also going to be just slightly bigger too. They're kind of coming up out of, out of us and they're just a little bit bigger. So I'm getting a little bit of that pink now and that there's purple is still a little wet. So I've got that white mixed in here to that, this color. And not the one with the turquoise, but the one just with the magenta, purple, and, and burnt orange. A little bit of white mixed into it. Help to find that. And I think spray. I think I'm going to get a little bit of the quinacridone red and add that also. Just to give it a little bit more of a wine red color. Nice. And you'll find with these kind of fruit paintings, still lives, I think that the main thing is just to kind of do lots of layers because it's the sim you know the the subject is very simplified it's you're not you don't have a ton to look at you've got well depending on how complicated the scene is but you know it's kind of a static image so um getting a little creative with your paint color choices and really drawing out some of the colors that you're seeing exaggerating some of them so that they're really um even more um dramatic than what is in your photograph just slightly get a little bit more dark right here just gonna shape that out I think I need to make that one a little bit bigger get a little bit of that yellow now when you add yellow and purple together it's gonna make kind of a brownish color so you need to go really heavy on one of the too, so it overpowers that neutralizing effect. So I had mostly red in here when I picked up that yellow instead of this purple color. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to round it out at the top too. But I find that grapes are kind of, this kind of grapes at least, are kind of like an egg shape. Some of them are going to look round if they're facing towards you, um, you know, depending on kind of how they're angled. But for the most part, they're going to have kind of that general egg, eggy shape. Okay, I've got another question. Okay. The person would like to know, how would you describe your style? My style? Ooh. Um, I would say I'm mostly a realist painting painter, but um, contemporary is any painter who's alive, so I would say I'm a contemporary. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, I like, uh, I kind of like the term painterly realism, sort of, so it's like realism with a little bit of a painterly edge so that it's kind of shows the brush strokes somewhat and you know I want it to look like a painting I don't want it to look like totally photorealistic I want you to kind of go oh that's a whatever you know like recognizable but then when you look at it um, more closely you're like oh I see you know it looks like a painting like you can tell it's a painting too you know so just kind of a and I really do like that I'm kind of impressionist style like a Renoir used to do. Um, he's a famous um, painter from from the I think 1800s or something. Anyhow, he was like a contemporary of Monet and some of those I believe maybe before them actually. Um, but he um, he painted in he would paint his paintings like with portion of it like really um stylized and simplified and then he'd have like a certain section of it that was super realistic you know i really like that style i don't necessarily do it that way but i kind of um i kind of bridge that gap between that like photorealism and um impressionist style i really like that impressionist style i have 
um, a hard time stopping myself from going all the way into realism when I'm painting, though. So I push for a little bit more of that painterly thing, but I tend to end up a little bit closer to photorealism. So, but yeah, I don't know. That wasn't a really good answer. There really isn't. It's hard to um, classify it, you know, when it's your style. I mean, a lot of, I don't know, a lot of artists that are like, I'm a whatever, you know, I mean, well, I guess, I guess you can kind of know sort of generally where you fall, but um, I wonder, I don't know if like. Well, I, well, I have a much shorter answer than you have. Okay. <clears throat> what, what is yours? Your style is smoking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you talking as an artist or as a husband? <laughs> <There>. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think that was very helpful, honey. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I went a different direction with that. <laughs> you probably keep that to yourself. Okay, sorry, everybody. <laughs> Get a little bit of the quinacridone red and the cadmium red light just to add a little bit of the brighter reds. I honestly don't know which one is better using that light first and then go into dark or go using the dark and go into light it's kind of you're kind of going to go have to do both anyways so it doesn't really matter and this one is a lot bigger facing us here kind of but yeah What I was saying, though, you know, is just like, I don't know that you start out, you know, with a set thing in mind, like, I'm going to be a certain kind of painter, and you kind of just develops over time, and then you can look back at the body of your work and go, oh, okay, I guess I'm a whatever painter, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's more like how it, how it works, you know? But I think it's good to know kind of what you like and kind of strive for a certain type of thing, and if it works, great. If it doesn't... You know, at least you've hopefully kind of adapted it to your own liking and created your own new thing out of it. Well, your painting career also f is causing you to... Quinacridone orange, what? To, yes. like, go all over the place. Right, you right. Know, you're doing still lives, you're doing animals, you're doing mm -hmm. all kinds of different scenes and settings right. and, and techniques and things like that. Yeah. Whereas, like, a... A traditional artist is just doing whatever is appealing to them and right and then they can uh, just like hone their skills in that genre yeah or whatever is selling you know depending on what you know what they're if they are trying to make a living at it you know which i would suggest you know it, it's uh, it's very incredibly difficult to make a living at, at being an artist. I totally get it. And, you know, in an ideal world, you'd be able to paint whatever you wanted to all the time and make money at it. Um, but I found that, you know, it's not always that easy to find people to buy what you want to paint. <laughs> you know, they're not always as interested in whatever it is that you're painting as you are. But at the same time, you know, you will burn out if you don't paint what you're passionate about. So there's kind of a fine line there. You're going to have to find the things you like and then try to find your niche in the marketplace through that, you know. And hopefully the two align and you can uh, match up your passion with your art and have a good career selling your art too it's not just painting well, if just that's paint if that's what you want or just give it to friends you know i have a lot of people who just paint for themselves and they just you know use it as a way to give back yeah there was a person who posted in uh, facebook this week just about how it's just relaxing to them right yep just enjoy it mm-hmm Yeah, wasn't he? I can't remember what his job was. Wasn't he like a police 
something or I'm trying to remember it was like a really stressful job he said and painting just is like one of the activities that takes him out of his everyday you know worries and he's able to just decompress and I totally get that I say all the time I had three boys and uh I say all the, you know, when Mark and I had three boys, I should say. <laughs> Not just me, by myself. Well, you actually had four. I only had three. <laughs> Check. <laughs> yes. But I always kind of joke that half, half-heartedly, half but kind of true, really, too, that I, your art kind of kept me sane, you know, <laughs> chasing around three boys mm-hmm. for years. Um, so... It definitely helps. All right, just kind of going through here. I need to stop getting so caught up. I'm just enjoying this and talking, and I need to move faster here. (laughs) Just doing each one individually. Really what you need to do is just kind of use one color and kind of go and put a little bit of it in each one of these grapes and then move on. Stop nitpicking I'm yeah spending 30 minutes on one grape it's not going to get me through this in two hours all right here we go oops my phone just went off okay there we go put my phone on mute pause sorry hold while I Oh, it's just the Queen of England texting you, letting you know she's loving the show. That's nice of her. <laughs> it's way past her bedtime, I'm sure. Oh, they left the chicken parmesan. Oh, so oh, bad. Oh, so darn it. Jordan and Courtney, they're on the road home. Mm. They left their chicken parmesan from Pasta Grills. <sighs> That's too bad. I hate that for them. We'll, guess, we'll try to do something with it. I guess we're going to have to eat it. <laughs> it's too bad you didn't already have Chick Fil A, or you mm-hmm. could add it for dinner. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get some black here because I kind of lifted the black from when I was drawing earlier. I think. All right, so the background, I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot with it. I think I'm probably just going to leave it black. If you wanted to, you could, there's some slight, um, here we can do it just a little bit. Just some slight, like, tiny bit. I'll use the zinc white, too, because it's not as opaque. Get a little bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And make kind of a gray, gray brown. Add a little bit of the zinc white. And zinc white is, like I said, just kind of transparent white. So it's not going to show up real heavy. I'll just kind of scratch it here and there, down here. Not right up against my fruit, though, because I want it to look nice and dark right up underneath the fruit. So... Let me get my black and just kind of scrape it over. There we go. So that'll be just like a little indication of something there. And then I'm going to use the burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow oxide if I want to add a little bit of this rusty color that's back here. And I can kind of just tap it and... Try not to create a pattern, though. It's easy to create a pattern when you're doing stuff like this. So just kind of try to keep your brush movements random. I've still got a little bit of that gray in here, so it's kind of adding to it. See that? Very subtle, and if it's too like obvious, like 
the the way to keep it subtle is to kind of keep a keep the values pretty dark. So if you keep that your your color in the darker tones, then it'll it won't like overwhelm your painting. It won't you're not trying to attract attention. You're just trying to kind of give it a, a little bit of a backdrop. So there we go. That's all I'm going to do there. Just a little tiny hint of something happening in our background. So I've got these grapes started, not quite finished. Let me get a little bit of white, add it to this burnt orange color. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt orange just so that it's not so pink. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to mark out where I'm seeing some highlights happening. Yeah, these ones that are back here are pretty dark, so I'm not seeing too much, but like kind of like right in the middle of them. And kind of like we did with the pomegranate, kind of keep an eye on the shape of the grape and curve your brush strokes with the shape to get a good angle on in the fruit. Your highlights and shadows are going to follow that shape of the fruit. some cadmium yellow light here, adding a little bit more of the yellow tones. And then just where this where this two meet, what you're going to want to do is get a transition color. So get a color that is close to your dark and add it to the light color so that you have kind of a mixture of the both and I'm just kind of lightly blending them back and forth here just while that yellow's wet don't let it dry otherwise you won't be able to blend it so there we go do the same thing here and here wherever that yellow is there's going to be like a little slight transition from the red And let's get a little bit of this yellow with the reddish down here. These ones have a little yellow tone to them. Yeah, I kind of think yeah, starting with the... It's been a while since I've painted grapes, so I'm just trying to remember how I did it before. I think I'm finding that starting with the yellow is probably going to be better and then putting my darks back in. I was kind of trying to do them all at once, but they're not really letting me. here so these ones are getting a little more light a little bit at least these ones on top here a little bit more kind of reddish a little bit brighter so I'm gonna get a little bit of the quinacridone red with the magenta kind of 50 50 and then get that burnt orange and I'm gonna use that maybe a tiny bit of white but because all those colors are transparent all the quinacridones are transparent. Even that is probably not enough white. 
Got a question? Mm -hmm. Person is starting to upgrade their paints. Yes. And so after white, what would be in the next three or four that they may want to look into investing in? Get a good yellow because your yellow will make a big difference. You know, um, yellow is in your cheaper paints that they they won't cover very well. So if you get a good yellow, cadmium yellow light probably would be my choice. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to do a cadmium, you could do um, Hansa yellows are okay. Um, and then a I'm trying to think probably carbon black I would probably get black because I, I if you're painting a lot of the paintings like this where you're doing the black backgrounds having that that will cover in one coat versus like three coats for a, a cheaper paint so you know it'll save you money and time um, in the long run having a good black and then Probably quinacridone magenta, for sure. I use that in almost every single painting. And then for blues, I would get a thalo turquoise. And and then I've started using the thalo turquoise instead of thalo blue and thalo green because it's like in between. And you can do everything that those two colors can do combined, you know. So you can go more blue if you add a little bit of yellow to it. I'm sorry, not a little bit of um, magenta to it. So you could use magenta, turquoise, and any yellow hue or cadmium yellow light and get just almost a full range of colors just with those three colors. I used to use thalo blue and thalo green a lot, but not, not recently. I've been switching to the turquoise. It's, I like it better. Plus, I don't have to put as much paint out. <laughs> All right, getting a little bit of the purple here. my magenta. I'm going to use that over here. There's one here in the dark. And I'm just going to color this one a little bit darker right here at the bottom. So while you're painting circles, mm -hmm. you get a little bit of the unbleached titanium. It's like titanium white. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. I'm going to use a little bit of the cadmium red light and the magenta. We'll talk about that. Mag Patreon, yeah. Patreon. So it's the beginning of the month as we're doing this show. So that means it's a great time to sign up for Patreon because you get the whole month because they build by the calendar month. Mm -hmm. And currently our levels are $2 for the traceables. So you would get the traceables for this painting and every other YouTube video that she's done since February 2017. Mm -hmm. And then there's a $5 level where you get that. Plus you also get a bonus video that we do on a Sunday. So that's coming up uh, on the 14th of this month. And then also, a landscape. oh, nice. And also, again, you get all the bonus videos going back that far, too. And then the $10 level is all that, plus also a challenge image where there's a, a class each Thursday where you work on the same painting all month long. And again, you get all the previous challenge ones, too. Yep. So come on down. <laughs> I 
that's just extra people out who's asking me about Patreon and it's just in case you want more um what's the word? More Angela. More <laughs> <laughs> more advanced paintings mm -hmm. and, you know, a little bit more resources and things. So the ten dollar level group is really fun and we do a live stream most most Thursdays, not every Thursday. It just depends on how far along we are in a painting, but we just work on the painting all month long until we finish it. So it's not like this one where I have to sit down and finish it in one setting. It's a little bit more natural um, setting, so you can kind of see how I work out, um, you know, pro different problems and things. that, I, And usually the images, thus the name challenge, are more challenging for me included. And I try to pick things that are something that I haven't painted elsewhere and uh, kind of figure out how to do it. So it's a lot of fun, I think. And those ladies and guys, not just ladies, sorry. We've got like 80% ladies, so <laughs> say ladies, but there are some guys, and we appreciate them <laughs> putting up with us as ladies. <laughs> and great. as I say, you know, the, the best part of that $10 level is that I'm not – in the shows usually right because he's on the yeah, um, at my other job so if you want mark to be in those shows you can sign up and work towards his uh retirement, you know, fund. retirement fund yeah <laughs> <laughs> closer getting closer every day yep to all you amazing supporters out there yes month after month yes this is incredible incredible but it will only take like one or two of you at the million dollar level that would and secure that. Secure that. Yeah. Your retirement. And then you could be right. in all the challenge videos. Right. I'll just be all the time. Yeah, with me all the time. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we got a taste of it. It was actually, mm -hmm. you know, of all the things that came out of COVID that were horrible, you know, and terrible. One good thing came out of it that was that uh, Mark and I got to spend six months together at home on lockdown and realized that we could survive working together and we're, not kill each other. We're both alive. We're both alive. We did we, fine. We didn't have any major blowouts. Right. We, can't, we, we yeah. still don't have a police record. <laughs> so that's good. We're not going to show up on any reality TV show. <laughs> show up at our house not once. Win. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, sorry, just stretching. <laughs> Pickle, our dog, got in. We don't know what happened to him, but he was sick yesterday. I had to take him to the vet. He was limping. And then as soon as we got to the vet, he stopped limping. I'm like, dude, I forced them to like work you in today because you were limping and wouldn't even walk mm -hmm. around out in the yard to go to the bathroom. And now you're making me look like I was lying. Like, <laughs> 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 he got there. As soon as I set him down, he started walking around like nothing was happening. And I'm like, dude, come on. I think it must be a predator thing. They, like, sense other dogs around. They're like, I can't show weakness. But he was pathetic. I mean, just like, oh, oh. But he's back to normal today, so I have no idea what was going on with him. He was faking it, I think, to get attention from Liam. That's what I'm part. <laughs> that would be funny. Your dog, not funny, but you know. Mm. <laughs> kind of funny. Dogs. Jealous. Trying to get attention away from the grandbaby by limping and carrying on. 
Yeah, he was getting in between me and Liam as we were playing trains on the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, like, hey, how's it going? Hey, Dad, you don't need to. But he saw that, the vet, and barked at her. Did I tell you that? Yes, you she did. came yeah. in the door and he barked at her. Like, nope. You are the mean lady. You poked me last time I was here. Oh, he remembers. She's like super sweet, too. Yeah, I know. He remembers. Yep. Okay. Touching up with a little bit of black hair. All right, so basically did the same thing over here. Just kind of filled in all those grapes with my reds and not as many with the yellow over here. I will add it, but again, these are kind of drying, so I'm going to let it dry completely and come back to it. But since this is dry, I'm gonna, I can go ahead and put a second coat on here now. So I'm going to get my yellow oxide, a little bit Indian yellow hue. I picked a yellow oxide because it was trans it was uh, opaque. You could use yellow ochre too. And um, the yellow oxide is transparent so it wouldn't cover the black. So that's why I grabbed the yellow oxide at the last minute. Just to make sure I had some opaque color here to add. And then just going to kind of scratch it along here. Let some of that first layer show through. And there's a lot of like areas where there's kind of almost stippling. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap with this. This is a stiff bristle brush so it'll kind of do this little stippling effect. And then I can kind of wipe off my color and just sort of Mush that around and blend it in a little bit while that paint's wet. Soften that up a little bit. That's better. That was a little bit thick with paint. So this is called stippling when you're just tapping paint over the top here creating a textured pattern. And then if I want a dry brush, I can use this brush that doesn't have any water in it. I've wiped it, you know, wiped it clean so it's dry. You don't want to do this with a good, healthy brush, a soft brush like this, because you can damage your brush. So you want to use a brush that's got stiff bristles that's meant for this kind of technique, or an older brush that's kind of damaged, but already, you know, because you don't want to ruin it. But I'm going to get a little bit of my quinacridone red and my cadmium red light and sort of mix those two together. And I'm seeing pretty um, intense color here, so I'm not going to try to um, tone down this color much at all. I'm just going to use it straight up. And I'm going to lay it on here, tap it, sort of stippling it. But where your dry brushing comes in is where you almost lay your brush down flat on the canvas and just drag it. And you see how it's picking up the texture of the canvas. And this tex this canvas is fairly smooth, so it's not going to be as noticeable as like if you had a really textured canvas. This would be really noticeable because you would pick up all the little nooks and crannies of your canvas would pick up that paint it pulls it off the canvas uh, off the brush and you end up with this nice textured effect it works really well for wood and things like this where you're going over this dark color see adding all these nice and I'm going to get a little bit of the quinacridone red use it <clears throat> Maybe get a little bit of the magenta. I 
And over here, it's quite a lot redder, darker. So I'll go ahead and give it a second coat over here. I'm really just kind of scratching it in at this point. Just pushing that paint. That's where, why I was saying, you know, you want to use a stiffer bristle brush and because you're really pressing against the bristles and you never really want to push against the bristles when you're brushing with a paint, paintbrush like this because it can break them and they'll split and they'll break off against. You're always, with this kind of brush, you're always wanting to pull with the grain of the hairs and, you know, going in this direction. But in this, whoops, in this case, we're actually pushing in both directions and side to side. So that's not something you would do with a normal brush. Okay, getting some more of that yellow right here along this edge. It's like a little bit of highlights happening right here. So this brush is kind of like me, kind of like not but normal. Not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Not normal. <laughs> what is normal, anyways? I've never exactly. really understood that. Normal is boring. next to this dark okay. and again when you're making these kind of patterns just want to make sure you're kind of every now and then rotating your brush so that you're not getting these repeat patterns in your brush strokes so you can tend to end up with with a pattern that's you know same 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 all lined up and then it really takes away from the realism. So keep an eye on that. And I'm tapping, I'm kind of moving my brush up, back, almost in like a figure eight, back and forth and up and down, constantly moving it in different directions so that I'm not repeating my patterns in same, the same areas and getting repeat uh, obvious patterns. I said that four different ways, so hopefully you understood it. But at least there wasn't a pattern to it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please tip your waitresses. <laughs> or waiters. Mm. Right. So, we had a I don't usually leave bad reviews, but I left a really bad review last night for a local restaurant. I was mad. <laughs> yeah, their uh, their customer service. Well, what's less they than stellar? They really didn't have one. Yeah, didn't. So. Yeah, didn't really exist. When they hang up on you, that's pretty much yeah. like a sure tell sign that yeah. So oh well. <laughs> We're beyond that now. Yes, we are. Okay. Mark's like, don't, don't yeah. get her started. <laughs> Happy thoughts. She may have left a Google review. <laughs> <laughs> when you go to their Facebook page and they don't have any stars mm -hmm. or a place where you can leave a review, there's a, that's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Using the purple, this is that dark mixture, the purple magenta burnt orange and just going right along my edge here and really darkening that up mm -hmm. I tried to move this away from here but it really kind of the way I drew it I need to have that closer to that okay there we go looks good let's go ahead and darken up the top of this guy 
And then I'm just going to get it with my with my brush here. I'm going to get the one round and some water and some burnt umber. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna, yellow oxide. I just want kind of a brown, but I don't want to over mix these colors. So I kind of want it to be streaky. And I'm just going to kind of, oops, a little bit wet. Get some of that water off of there. There we go. I don't know why this is so watery. I must have, I have a little pool of water right there. And I'm just going to kind of go up on the side of that, kind of create that sort of dark stuff that sticks out the top of that pomegranate to stem, the end of stem. I don't know what that's called, but. Huh, stub? I think you have the technical term right, dark stuff. Dark stuff, mm -hmm. okay. Getting some white now with my cadmium um, or my um, Indian yellow hue. So I want to go kind of a little bit yeah, lighter here. I'm going to highlight that top part right there. Just a little bit. So that's all I'm going to do. You can just, all it was is a little wiggle. So you can, you don't have to over, over um, detail things and you're, your eye will figure out the rest and it'll kind of fill in the gaps. It's really amazing how our, our, our perceptions do that. Um, so when painting this kind of realistic type painting, sometimes less is more, you know, doing less is uh, just enough. I'm gonna go in here and just a little tiny bits, little tiny dots in the right place will make a big difference. Okay, so I'm gonna get that color with my blender here. Make sure this is dry. I'm gonna get some of the zinc white and my Indian yellow hue. Zinc white being transparent and the Indian yellow hue also being transparent. Create a nice yellow. It's gonna be a nice soft highlight color for me. I'm going to just put it kind of in the middle. So lay down my color kind of bright, right where I want it to be the brightest. And then I can wipe off and just kind of work the edges and scrub out those edges so that they're soft. And this may take a couple coats, so don't worry if it doesn't, you know, look good on your first try. I'll definitely need to go back in and put another, you know, layer of white on there, but I gotta let that dry, just like you know we've talked about before. Need a little bit of burnt umber, and put in some like spots with my burnt umber that are kind of maybe little spots of my fruit. You know the pomegranate have these little streaks and spots. There we go. I'm looking more and more realistic. Okay, so we'll put that highlight on there. It'll be perfect. Let's go ahead and work on our part of our fruit down here. I'm going to get the burnt orange, uh, burnt, I don't know why I said burnt, the unbleached mm -hmm. titanium, and add it to this yellow oxide mixture that we just made. And I'm going to kind of map out my shape um, in the pomegranate right here, my little wedge and then just kind of use it to scrape. I'm gonna get some of that yellow oxide, use it to kind of scrape underneath, sort of where I'm seeing this wedge. And it's just, it's basically a triangle that's got a rounded bottom, is what I'm seeing with it. And a little bit of some flaky stuff happening the top and sides so it's, it's a good thing that you and I weren't around in like the the discovery part of time right you know 1500 1640 whatever right and we're in charge of naming things because <laughs> the uh, the textbooks would look a lot different today <laughs> flaky bits flaky bits right black furry stuff <laughs> 
I, my 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 talent is not in naming things; it's in painting them. But maybe if we put like a words Latin, are not my. <laughs> well, we could put a, like a Latin term in front, and then it'd be more official sounding. <laughs> I can't remember my Latin. I took two years of Latin in high school and I... Yeah, and how's that working out for you? Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's two years of your life you don't get back. That's true. True. So does anybody here speak Latin? <laughs> You're not supposed to speak it. It was supposed to be like to set you up for doing better with other languages and with English vocabulary because we derive a lot of our words from Latin. Which I mm. I think it there's some truth to that because I do have a decent vocabulary and can kind of figure out root words. But but no, I don't use it. <laughs> All right, using the same dark over here that I used before, maybe a little bit more red in it, but that purple magenta mixture here. I'm gonna. Fill in my pomegranate fruits here. Give them a little bit of red. And they're all mushed together and then they kind of, I don't know if you've ever eaten the fruits, but they, when you like take them out, they're kind of, um, they're kind of uh, that egg shape almost, but because they've been smushed together, they're, they have like a, almost an angular shapes. So our highlights here are very angular. I noticed they're like, um, they're not like smooth and soft, uh, rounded shapes. They're kind of flattened out in places. So that'll be fun when we do our highlights. We can kind of play with that. So for now, I'm just kind of trying to get in some of these dark shapes because really what's going to form the basis of these fruits and shape them out is the is their highlights so I'm going to get some of that quinacridone or the cadmium red light for some of these down here a little bit more red inside And then getting that dark. Gonna go between. Okay. Let's get that cadmium red light. And I'm gonna use that to kind of just kind of lightly map out sort of my basic shapes. Now that I've got my dark in here. Kind of avoid the outside edges and sort of just work the centers and into these lighter colors. And there's that seed that kind of is in the middle that we can kind of see through glowing through the pomegranate too. So this will be kind of a way to show that. Those seeds are kind of that sort of like a little... So when you get to the seed part, you gotta whisper. Seed whisper. Yes. Sorry. That's okay. Try not to. I think what it is is the the smaller the object you're painting, the lower your voice gets. The lower my voice gets. It's so kind of like a proportional. <laughs> get more. It's, the more I concentrate, the more my voice gets soft. Mm -hmm. Thinking and concentrating. This one looks a little bit more um, planned out, so I want to 
And I go back in and make it more random looking a little bit. There we go. So we'll let those dry and then we'll put in some more bits and things. But while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of purple in my burnt umber or a tiny bit of black. And I'm going to create my like shadows around the fruit there. And I'm just going to use this dry brush here and just tap over it because it's kind of wet. Just smush it in a little. Took off some of the moisture there. Just make sure I've got some And it should kind of just dissolve into nothing over here where, where it goes down. So this is just all broken up. We don't want it to look too fancy or s smooth at all. Gonna take away from the realism again, kind of like we did up here. Just kind of less is more, just little lines and indications are all we need. Let's get a little bit of white. My unbleached titanium, there's some white through here. And kind of work it in and wiggle my brush so that it looks kind of powdery and is breaking up in places. So kind of like partially covering up colors but not fully. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, I think now we'll let that dry. We'll let that dry. Let's go ahead and work on this again. I'll give this another layer. So I'm going to get just the in the zinc white and a little bit of the titanium white. So kind of 50-50. And really take the moisture out of my brush. So I have just the, just the paint is the wet part. I'm going to drag it where I want it brightest. And very quickly wipe my brush off. And while that's still wet, work that edge. Do this quickly. Don't don't try to get your shape perfect or anything. You you're you can kind of mess with it while you're pushing it around here, but I'm not ever touching in the middle of that wet paint because that'll lift it. I'll scrub it off if I do that. So I'm just trying to kind of <clears throat> get right up on that up around it and that's good. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow and just kind of come on right around the outside with a little bit of yellow. That's good. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry. Nice highlight there. And I'm going to get a little bit smaller brush this time. So I'm going to get my blender, my quarter inch blender. I'm going to start to do the same type of thing as this on my grapes. So I'm going to get my zinc white and my ultramarine blue. That's going to be the color that I use on my grapes. So we've got this nice purple tones and things in here. And this is going to give it a nice, like, that kind of smoky color that you get on your grapes. This is really, really fun. So you're like, oh, I didn't see blue. But yeah, I see it now. You know? And the zinc white helps it from going on to opaque too obvious you um, can just use it to kind of shape the grapes a little bit we're going to glaze too so this isn't the final layer we're going to glaze and we're going to highlight a little bit so I'm not I'm just kind of looking on my photo to see kind of where I'm seeing the most of the the little smoky highlights that are in the grapes. Great little trick. You especially see it down here. Up in here the highlights are a little bit more pink but what we can do is we can 
when we glaze we can use a little bit of red and it'll make this that blue look a little bit more the right tone you can see they're not it's not smooth we're not trying for smooth we're trying for kind of the, broken up little highlights. So just kind of sc scrubbing it, changing direction, and getting some little, you can tap if you want to, just however it works for you. But just kind of getting some little patterns in my grape. Gonna look at funky, but we'll fix them. And I didn't actually get the red on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this anyways. A little bit on each one of these. Not as much highlights on these ones that are in our dark areas. And also kind of follow that direction of the outline of the fruit too, it'll help. And this is what I was talking about, about like exaggerating the color. Because there is a little bit of blue in the grapes, but we can really play with it and bump it up even more. Just to, because we want it to be a little bit more dramatic. It'll still be realistic, but I have a really interesting color story. Lots of colors going on in here. Not just purple and white, or red and white. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm liking it. Let's go back over here. I think this is dry enough. I can get a little spot of white right here. Um, let's go ahead and get my zinc white and my titanium white. Same thing we did over here, so it's not too too much too quickly. Actually I wanna I wanna wait. I wanna do the white highlights at the very end. I wanna do the the glazing first. The shadows. Oops. So I'm gonna get my Indian yellow hue. I'm gonna start with glazing with the yellow and some glaze and if you don't have glaze just use water it's fine wipe off most of it so there's just a little bit on here and i'm going to use it to tint some of these grapes i'm gonna add just a little hint of yellow see how that works see okay Get some red, a little bit of the cadmium red light, and quinacridone red. Cadmium red light is is an opaque red, so it'll help this cover a little bit. Really nice. It's got a really bright glow though, so the quinacridone will kind of tone it down a little bit. This will add that glow that we're wanting in our, kind of make them look like they're glowing on the inside a little bit. And if you cover up all your 
blue that you can always go back in and put it in again. So. Here we go. Pretty pretty. I'm using the angle, three eighths inch angle brush again for this. So quinacridone red and cadmium red light for this. And this is not quite glazing. I'm kind of in between. It's not quite opaque, but not quite transparent. It's kind of in between. So I'm kind of going over this and just tinting it a little bit. Translucent color. Getting a little bit more glow. We get a little bit of that dark magenta with that black and burnt orange or burnt umber I mean use it down here on this guy and this is transparent so it's kind of glazing this guy kind of goes to dark just use my finger to kind of wipe it out so it has a nice smooth blend here let's go ahead and use it here too so this guy does the same thing, goes almost black on this edge away from the light source. Figure out your light source and this lighting is super dramatic. So all of these that are farthest away are getting really dark on this area where they're turning under. And there's a little shadow on this guy too. So is that called? Chiaroscuro. I don't know what you're talking. What? That. Yeah, the, the that super dark. That effect. Okay, possibly. Because I can't say the word. I had to play it off okay. long online. Chiaroscuro. Somebody asked about it earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, old masters. Kind of this, these kind of paintings with the really dark, dramatic light. I don't use that word, tend to, <laughs> no, I'm just kinda. Yeah, I told him I wasn't gonna try to say it, cause no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I thought that this, what you were doing here looked like with the pictures that were online, so. Yeah, it is, it's a similar, yeah. The use of strong contrasts between light and dark. Right. I'm using my reds and my burnt orange here. These guys need some color. Down here. Okay, we're almost there. Not sure if we'll get done in our two hours, but we'll try. I'm trying. We're pretty close. So let's get these guys some really good shadows. Hold on, I got a Yoda magnet over here for you. What? I said I have a Yoda magnet for you. Don't try. Do or do not. 
Mm-hmm. There is no dry. <laughs> Purple, magenta, burnt orange, a little bit of black. Really dark. Going to use it transparently to darken up this guy. Right, and then if you need it anywhere in here, you can use it in your pomegranate to kind of darken up in between some of these seeds if, you know, if they got a little too much. You can use it up here. I'm going to go ahead and just glaze a little bit on here just to darken up my pomegranate on this side really well. And then I'm going to get a little bit of white and this quinacridone red and just kind of use it to sort of highlight right there where the this one kind of overlaps this it sticks out a little bit Let's go ahead and use that color, that quinacridone, or the quinacridone red and white here. Just a little bit of a highlighted red. We can use it kind of like we did the blue highlights. And I'm finding it hard to see when I'm looking straight down. I'm seeing it better. I'm going to look at the camera. Tilting it towards you might help. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the, there's a lot of glare on it. Here we go. All right, so going in between some of these and just kind of bumping up the, you know, the contrast between the two layers there. Making sure I've got a good, like, highlight and shadow side on all of them. Get a little bit of red. Nice. And I think I'm gonna have to put the blue on these ones again. Down here. You sound like a gangster there for a second. What? I'm going to put the blue on these ones again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Do you? Kingster heart. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's business. What'd you say? Blueing grapes. Like Blueing nobody's, grapes. Like nobody's business. <laughs> you don't want to know. It's an art thing. Okay, get up here. All right. Can I just put a little ghost of a color? See if I can get a little bit. Just like the ghost of grapes underneath there. <laughs> Same thing right here. Just like the ghost of color there so that they look really dark. This should be almost black. All these that are kind of underneath and overlapped with other colors. There's a little bit. I'm going to get some of that red that I was using before with the two reds there. Get a little bit of highlight right on here. Just where it peeks out. A little highlight. Okay. 
Okay, and then getting that purple magenta, quinacridone burnt orange. And if you don't have quinacridone burnt orange, use like a burnt sienna would work. But more magenta. It's kind of a reddish, reddish orange. So just using this glaze to separate out my grapes here and darken up. Add my shadows on the side away from the light. you're seeing it on the top too just depending on the grape somebody would like to know does the black background require more layers than a light background it does somewhat but I think it also um contributes to the um there's just a, like a slight every now and then you can see a little bit of it through your paint and it i i think working on black for something like this especially where you have a lot of the dark areas is really makes it easier to put together a painting like this it's faster than it would have been to do it um on white and you know you get the better i don't know i think it's just you get a better moody feel for it so all right so now i've got my i'm going to get a little bit of the cadmium red light and my cat um quinacridone red and my white and i'm going to use it kind of where i'm seeing my light source and i'm just tapping my brush in that area a little bit. So this should just be a little bit lighter than what we've done previous. do a little bit of yellow in this one because I didn't but these guys didn't get any yellow so I'm gonna use a little bit of that Indian yellow hue over here give them a little bit of yellow glow and give these guys a little bit more yellow too use this color with the yellow And this is one of those things where, you know, I'm, I'm going for, you know, I'm, I'm really bumping up the realism here. But if at any, if at any point you want to stop, you can stop. You know, you don't have to continue on and do it this realistic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a little bit smaller brush. We'll do the highlights in our pomegranate. And I'm going to get the zinc white for this and a little bit of the ultra oh, well, titanium white. It's kind of 50-50. Again, and I'm gonna just kind of very carefully draw in some shapes that are slightly transparent and more more opaque in certain spots. So and really look at your shapes that you're seeing in your pomegranate because tendency is going to be to want to do circles but these are actually really interesting shapes they're kind of more like squares and hexagons
this one out a little bit. A little red. Softening up those white bits with a little bit of red. Okay, go back to get that color there. White and if you don't have the zinc white, just use ultramarine or um, titanium white with, you know, just less potent, a little bit more transparent. Some of them are just like one side of it lit up. Temptation is going to be to do more than what you're seeing, so just, just do what you see. Trust what you're seeing. That'll make it look more realistic. this in our grapes we'll be about done so I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this brush this is a filbert and I'm gonna get a little bit of water but I'm gonna try to keep my brush fairly dry you need to add a little bit of water since it's a softer brush but um, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of blue and start out with the blue do that again in a couple places because I kind of wiped off a lot of my blue markings so just a few places and sort of in my brightest areas oh yeah I've got to do the green stems too don't let me forget those are the fun fun part. It's really kind of almost scribbling with this. Just kind of putting the color down like we did up here. Put the color down where you want it brightest and then just push it around a little bit. Use your finger to push it around. And if you get too much, you can always glaze back over it. Not set in stone. Don't be afraid. You'd be surprised what you can do. It takes a little practice. And don't, you know, don't expect it to be perfect on your first try you know nobody's perfect when they first try out anything new so I don't know why there's this notion that you're not good at art if you can't do it perfectly the first time you sit down to try it it's totally false everybody that's a good artist has had to work at it to get there unless you're like a savant and that's very rare you know <laughs> you might have a little bit of innate talent that makes it easier for you but doesn't mean that somebody can't learn it just as well by working hard at it, you know, so, um, get a little bit of white this time, going in with a little bit of brighter color, just in the centers of some of these, some of these, like this one has kind of almost like a window highlight right here. Yeah. 
I think as adults, somehow we were fed the notion that, you know, we're not good at art and that, you know, we can't do it even if we really want to. Somehow, there's a lot of people I know that, you know, had art classes as kids or something and just, you know, didn't come naturally to them or for whatever reason, they just had a bad experience with it and then never tried again. <laughs> I cannot tell you how many people I, you know, even friends of mine are like, well, no, I'm not good at art. And I'm like, no, you, you know, you actually could be if you practiced at it. Um, it's with you, you know, with now, nowadays with YouTube and stuff, it's not like it was when, when I learned. I had to, you know, learn from actual teachers in, in person or, you know, books or whatever that I could find, scrounge up for instructions. And nowadays there's just resources everywhere. That's why I appreciate our patrons so much because I know there's a ton of other teachers out there that are teaching and doing really great work. But we've got some really sweet and loyal followers that many of them have been following us for years and it's just amazing to me because I know, you know, like I said, there's a lot of really good teachers out there. So I'm glad that you see something in what we're doing of value and come back. So I appreciate it. Those who watch our videos and share them with friends or share them on your social media really does help us um, get the word out. You know, there's times this year especially, it's been kind of interesting because I think that people have been cooped up and, you know, tired of being at home for, you know, so long. So we had a really big dip this summer. We're starting to see it kind of bounce back in our numbers. But, you know, uh, last year we didn't have that because everybody was home. So they didn't have anything to do but watch videos, <laughs> you know. So... I'm glad for people that they're getting out and getting to do things, but at the same time, we're kind of miss our regular folks that watch us. So we're hopefully this fall, winter, once it's getting cooler, because I'll kind of get back into painting and doing some of this stuff that yeah, hang out. out. Hang out with the old gang, and exactly. we got a lot of them. Are you know been with us all the way through, regardless. And mm -hmm. like you said, we really do appreciate it for sure. Yep, yep. All right, it's looking good. Getting there, almost there. Real quick, I wanted to mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that uh, we're coming into the holiday season, and so if you're looking to give Christmas ideas for your for yourself to loved ones and others, you can share the links to like the brush cries and get brush sets right. things like that that are down below here too yeah yeah all the materials that we use we have links that are affiliates that help support our channel too just by, by purchasing through our links mm -hmm. no extra cost to you but it really helps us if you use those but yeah it keeps our videos free <laughs> We'll be doing these as long as we can. This one got higher for some reason. I don't know. These got moved around a little bit, but that's all right. This still works. See how much that white highlight really makes a difference, doesn't it? See the ones we haven't done yet? Okay, getting some of that white, a little bit of the zinc white and the ultramarine blue here we'll start out with that like we did over here and just we already had a little bit of this but we're just like bumping it up in the brightest areas just to have that as a backdrop for our highlights shape here so you got the rounded 
shape, but then their highlights are kind of, again, following that curve. So I'm not going in with the, like a straight highlight. I'm always kind of curving them around so that they're creating that rounded shape of our grape. Definitely think there was a window in here somewhere. <laughs> seen a lot of shapes that look like windows. Light source. This one is right up against this guy. Okay, getting some white. The nice thing about this again is just really pretty easy to do these highlights because this the fruit has got a really interesting texture and so I mean even though it's a smooth grape we know it's round and smooth the way the light's picking up on the skin though is kind of mottled and irregular so it makes it really neat interesting highlights things happening Get some yellow and white. Someone may have locked themselves out. Spencer? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Getting some of that magenta. Ooh, that's got the turquoise in there. don't mind that color though I just need to clean out my brush so a little bit of the magenta and a little bit of the turquoise I'm just gonna use it to darken up a couple of the areas here this is where you can glaze and adjust like I said you know you don't have to once you get your highlights done you can go back in and if you go over those light areas you can change the tone of the color totally you can make a red or, you know, let's go ahead and do that up here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll get a little bit of this quinacridone red, which is a transparent color. And I'll just go over some of this light area here. See how it's going to tint it. So it's kind of a way to tone down if you get your highlights on and you're like, uh, oh, it's a little too bright there or whatever. Or it doesn't kind of blend in very well. You can kind of go over it and smooth it out a little bit and help it help it out. Get a little bit of the unbleached titanium with that red, quinacridone red. Here, I'm going to use it on this guy. To... But yeah, there you go. And smooth out that bright highlight. Go around the edges of it. Kind of s there we go. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit more white here. Oops. 
just going to really bump up, give it a nice bright little highlight a couple places. <laughs> Is she going to make it? I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. No, I was just checking out that you've got a, a great lineup for November. A lot of Christmas themed stuff yes. coming up here. Yep. Yep. Already starting on Christmas. So if you haven't already, <coughs> hit the like, subscribe. Hit the reminder for all these great tutorials coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be really fun. Nice. Indian yellow hue, mostly yellow. A little bit of the turquoise. I can add a little bit of the ultramarine blue, too, to kind of help bump it up. And some white. There we go. Nice, bright, vivid green there. And I'm going to use my round. This is the one round, I believe. Yeah, one round. Twist my brush to a point. So I've got a nice, so just really whatever liner you choose to use, just make sure you've got it going to a nice point to get more white in the yellow. Got a little bit of this green to it. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to come out here, just kind of on its own. Just kind of a stem coming down, and then it comes down meets up with this. There. I'm going to get the darker green there. Okay. Wiping that off. Come down in here. It's coming out. And there's all these little bits, you know, how they do. Where they break off and they kind of come To the different grapes so I'm gonna start out small and then kind of map out where I want these to go you're really not seeing these ones are off camera here so I'm not seeing where these are going to the grapes are already gone off of them probably <coughs> go right down in there and then I'll get that dark burnt umber black with this green here and just darken up that stem where it's coming out and we can add a little bit of dark here and there to, to some of it where it fades out and maybe the ends broken off or something <coughs> same thing here give it a little bit A little bit of dark here and there. All right. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. Indian yellow hue. And my white. Come on. There we go. So just slightly brighter than what we were just using. And kind of go along the tops of a couple of these little spots here. And just highlight. Bring it out, give it a little bit of dimension. There we go. I'm going to add a little bit of this greenish yellow color to the pomegranate too. 
That'll help unify it, even if it's not in here, I would add it. But it is, there's a little bit of this color in here. Or one kind of like it. Nice. I can add a little, maybe a hint of it down coming off your hair or something. I don't know if I like that. I'll take that off. Okay. All right. I think we're done. What do you think? Good? It looks pretty amazing, actually. Get a little bit of burnt umber here. Add a little bit more bright, or dark, I should say, like spots there. And again, you could glaze the glaze in the pomegranate um, seeds. I didn't spend a ton of time with the pomegranate seeds, so I might go. Let me just wall before I end. I'll get a little bit of the quinacridone red with the with the white, Maybe a little bit of the orange, but and just kind of outline a few of these just slightly, give it a little glow. I've kind of got the orangey seed in there already, so this will just kind of help define the outline of them a little bit more. Little, get them a little closer together. They're kind of spread out with a lot of dark in between, so not that much dark in there. There's it's kind of more red. Getting a little bit of magenta. Doing the same with the magenta. Nice. pretty getting the white the only thing that would make this better is probably just have like a chocolate bar right in there somewhere <laughs> any more delicious yeah <laughs> I mean it's okay. it's okay but I mean to really bring it to master level right some chocolate dark chocolate right dark there chocolate. yeah in fact, you probably just paint over the whole thing and just Make chocolate bar. bar. Yeah. yeah, maybe I need to do that next, like for Valentine's Day or something. Ooh. Do a chocolate bar. Take some photos of the C's candy. <laughs> well, you better do it quick. Shout out to C's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can sponsor if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take payment and free candy. And free chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah, it turned out good. I like it. I like it. I'm going to get a small round and sign it while Mark's doing his thing. And that's for the new people. Yes, we ring a cowbell at the end. Woo. For all the super chatters. They're like, <laughs> okay, I don't get it. <laughs> get it now. Oh, yeah, we were supposed to start stick man in. <gasps> that's right. You, pr it. you promised. I yeah. forgot all about it, too. Okay, we'll start it. I can't do it next week, but we'll start it the week after. Okay. So. Sounds good. So we have uh, we had three Super Jetters tonight. The first one was from Dana and says, As always, your painting is absolutely stellar. Aww. Thanks so much for always putting me in a great mood. Yay. So thank you, Dana. And then we have from Karen. says, I love you both so much. Thank you for sharing your talent with us oh. all. Thank you, Karen. So Dana? I'm thinking Karen was talking about specific, specifically your talent. <laughs> so anyway. Because what is your talent? <clears throat> I'm trying to figure that out. So. <laughs> and then the last one was from, more white. from Pat and says, thank you for sharing your talent and humor with us. Oh, well, that is your talent, I think. Humor. Yes. Okay. Yes. 
Pat nailed it. So thank you to Pat and to Karen and to Dana. Thank you guys. Super sweet. All right, there we go. That was fun. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And oh, I'm noticing that this is more red in our photos, more reddish. So um, what I can do before we go is use my glaze with my little cadmium red with the that's got the orangey tone to it and just put a wash of orangey red over most of this. It'll change that color right up. This is what I was talking about with glazing. Sometimes it's called washes. Washes are technically like the entire canvas, the background, you know, so that's the difference, but basically they're both the same type of your, you know, using a thinned out paint to cover an area. There we go. Now it looks more red. We could even do it again, but I think we're, well, now we need to do our white highlights. <laughs> Sorry. No big deal. Like I said, they're probably going to recap the last nine seasons tonight, so I'm not going to miss much. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew this one was going to be a kind of a stretch to get it done in well, an to, hour to do two this, hours, I mean. To do this level of painting in two hours? Come on, seriously? <laughs> You're just flexing over there. <laughs> Thanks, hon. All right, thanks, guys, this so much. Painting? This is painting? This is all you paint when you don't really care what you paint. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, yeah. <laughs> a, a wonderful life. Yeah. It's a wonderful life, which I'm super excited is coming on Christmas season. I cannot wait to start painting Christmas with you guys. It's super fun. So, yeah. all right, we're going to start next, next this Saturday, actually. Yeah. We're going to be painting some ornaments. So, so get yourself some. Get uh, your uh, wood ornaments ready and little wood slices we're going to be painting some birds on them it's going to be fun so hope you join us for that and for the rest of the paintings and if you want to see them all uh what we've got coming up in november you can click on my um photo or my um my photo or my name and it'll take you to my home page there on youtube and show you kind of all the different paintings that we've got coming up this month so it'll be a lot of fun and then if you want to go and see the things on crowdcast too we've got a um you can join our newsletter we've got uh we send out our schedule a uh, weekly schedule in our on our thankfulart.com um newsletter so and you should see everything that we're going to be painting that week so all right that's it we're going for real now <laughs> i promise <laughs> thanks guys have a great rest of your evening <laughs> see you next time bye